Have you got electrical gremlins? Let me show you some tips and tricks that might help you find them. In order to show you how to fault find electrical problems with your vehicle, I've set up a test board here with a couple of different basic circuits on it. I'm gonna use this with some test equipment to show you the basics of finding electrical faults. Let's look at the board and see what we have. Over here, we have the positive connection, which would be very similar to the positive connection on the battery of your vehicle. Over here, we have the negative, which is sometimes referred to as ground or earth. In this case, we're gonna to refer to it as negative. Coming off your positive terminal here, we have the fuse board. The fuse board has two connections coming off it, a direct live to the key and a fused live over here to the light switch. Also on the board is our solenoid, which is triggered by the key and controls the high current voltage through the starter motor in order to crank the starter motor. The light switch over here then has a feed directly from the fuse board and controls our light. There's a system to which you need to follow when you're electrical fault finding and it has a number of steps. The very first step is looking at the battery and checking its health first. So let's go over to the battery now and have a look at that and see. This is the high rate discharge tester. Basically what it does is puts a huge load across the battery and tests its capacity to deal with that load. How it does it, it has a big resistive element inside here, which would put a draw on the battery similar to the starter motor. On the top of the instrument is a dial, which tells you whether it's keeping up with the current draw or not. If it's in the red, it's not keeping up with the current draw. If it's in the green, it is. How do we test the battery with it? Well, here's the battery of our test board. You can see the positive and negative of the test board coming down onto our battery terminals, the same as you would see in your car. What we do is we put the high rate discharge tester across the terminals. It's adjustable, this leg moves in and out. When you bring it down on the battery, you're looking at the dial to see what rating you get. You hold it on the battery for about eight to 10 seconds to see if it maintains the green. You can see a little bit of smoke coming off in here. That's the high current burning off any oils or greases that might be on the element inside. And it's quite hot, so be careful after you do that test. If it remains in the green, then that's telling you there's probably a good current capacity in your battery. If it's in the red, then that's the very first thing you need to fix before moving on. Okay, what I have here is my multimeter. A multimeter is a really useful tool for testing problems with or fault finding electrical connections. How good is it at testing batteries? It can give us some indications as to the battery's health, but that's about all it can do. The high rate discharge tester is really the ultimate way of really loading down that battery and seeing what its capacity is. Okay, I have my GoPro angle here to give you a look at the screen of the multimeter, and then I can demonstrate some of the readings that we might get. So I'm gonna put the multimeter in the voltage scale now, and I'm gonna put my live connection on the positive of the battery, and I'm gonna put my negative connection on the negative side of the battery. Let's let the multimeter settle down and see what it settles to. So it's at 12.3 volts now. What is that telling me? That's telling me that this battery is in good health, but it is reasonably discharged. That's no surprise given that I've been playing around with this electrical board and the high rate discharge tester for a while here to get you some good angles and some good views. What other readings might I expect to see? If those readings or numbers were down, say for example, around five or six volts, what that would tell you is the battery is very heavily sulfated or it might even have a damaged cell. If the voltage readings were up around maybe say 16 or 17 volts, that would tell you that your alternator is overcharging and is a really dangerous situation. It could overcharge the battery and could even set the car on fire. So you would stop straight away and find where your fault is. Other things you can do with a multimeter on testing a battery is you can check some earths. I'm gonna show you how we test earths with the multimeter and the battery now. Okay, to test bad earths on the car, you're testing chassis earths or earths on items, like for example, the starter motor. So let's get a baseline figure. We put our neutral connection of our test meter on the negative connection of the battery, and we use the positive connection to probe around and check our earths. So let's just go to here, which would be the engine, for example, the body of the uh, board here. And what I want you to see is on that multimeter, we have zero, zero, zero volts, meaning we have no voltage drop across that air cable. If I go up here onto the body of the starter motor, which is painted, I want you to see the number has risen up there to 14, 
15 and it is dancing all around the place meaning that there is a really poor earth we've got voltage drop across the earth if we scratch the paint to get down to the body of the start motor you can see the number is dropping back to zero so in this case you might have rust or you might have sulfation a bit of sandpaper on the connections or on the places where you're getting your earth might bring that number back down what you want to see is numbers less than one millivolt so you're looking for numbers around 0 0.23 or 4 indicating a good earth you will have some voltage drop across long copper cables or across the body of the car but you want that to be as little as you possibly can have okay i'm going to show you how to find faults in your circuit and i'm going to do that using a simple bulb indicator this is a really cheap effective way of testing circuits all i have is a festoon bulb that i've soldered two wires onto in this case a crimp connection on one end and a bit of bare copper on the other it doesn't really matter what way you do that whether it's a crimp connection or it's all bare wires or it's all crimp connections once you have a way of touching both ends of the cable so let's test our test equipment first so we get onto the live of the battery and a good earth somewhere and see if the bulb lights our bulb lights that tells us at least our test equipment is good so what circuit are we going to test? We're going to test the headlamp circuit. So my ignition is in the on position. My switch is in the on position, but the bulb is not lighting. Where is my fault? Okay, where could it be? Let's check the power from the battery terminal to the fuse board first. So I do that by putting my bulb on earth and touching it off one of those connections. I have a light. That means I have power from my battery up to my fuse board. Where is the next possible place it could have a fault? It would be across the fuse. So I check the other side of the fuse and sure enough, my bulb is not lighting. This tells me that I have a problem in my fuse. I'm gonna continue on as if that did light there and show you how you check the next area. So if the bulb did light at that, the next place it might be default is at the back of the switch. So between earth and the back of the switch. If my light bulb didn't light up, then that tells me I have a fault between the fuse board and the switch. If it does light up, it tells me I have power to the switch. The next place that I could have the fault is through the switch. How do I test the switch? By putting it in the on position and going to the output side. So between the output side and earth, if my bulb lit up, that tells me the switch is working properly. If my bulb doesn't light up, then I have a fault in my switch. After that, the next place to go to is the bulb. So if I have lighting bulb here at the back of the switch output, then the next place I'm going to go is to the headlamp bulb and try its live connection. I go between earth and the live connection. If my bulb lights, then that tells me that I have a good power supply up to the bulb. If my bulb doesn't light, then that tells me that I have a break in the connection between the switch and the connection to the light bulb. The last place that we would check, it'd be the earth. This time we're going to change things up a little bit. We would have to go between live and earth. And this will be testing the bulb or the earth in this case. So how are we going to test the earth? We're going to go between the earth and a known live connection. So if we had a live connection here at the switch, we could go between the two. If the bulb lit up, then that would tell us we have a good earth. Then the fault must be in the bulb. Okay. I'm going to show you something now, which is a place where people often get really badly caught out with multimeters. I've put a fault here in this fuse by badly connecting it in the fuse board. There is not enough power going through that fuse to light up my bulb, but I'm going to show you with the multimeter set on resistance how I can see no resistance across this switch, but yet it's still not powering up the bulb. Another way to test would be using multimeters. We can test using the multimeter on two possible scales, voltage or resistance. Voltage is pretty much exactly like the bulb test except for rather than a bulb lighting up, you'll see battery voltage. So for example, if I put one end of my meter on earth and one end of my meter on the battery, we see battery voltage, 12.6 volts, 12.06 volts, okay? We could do that across the board to see where our voltage drop was. So up on the fuse board, there we go, get our 12, and across here, we're getting our 12. Now that's interesting. The bulb didn't light, but we're getting voltage there. Remember guys, voltage isn't an indication of power to do work, only a voltage that is there. So there is volts, but not enough ampage. This is a place where resistance can get you really badly caught out. 
Resistance is a way of testing to see whether you have continuity between two ends or two pieces of copper, in this case wiring. We set our meter on the ohms scale, okay? So we're on the ohm scales here now and it's in the auto ranging function. So if I say, for example, test between the battery connection here and our fuse board, we will see zero resistance, meaning we've perfect continuity between the battery and the fuse board. If I check between the one side of the fuse and the other, what does our scale say? Zero resistance. Okay, but we know using the bulb test that we didn't have power across this fuse. So why is this meter telling us that we have perfect continuity? Therefore, the bulb should be lighting. This is a place where people often get caught trying to test electrical connections and start chasing their tails, thinking that they don't have a problem here and start checking all the rest of their wiring because their meter has told them that there's perfect continuity. Therefore, there must be a good connection. This is where that bulb test I showed you is so powerful. It puts load across the connection as well. It wants ampage to light that bulb up. A bad connection like this hasn't got enough ampage and therefore it can't light the bulb up. I'm gonna show you how we fix it. We know the fuse is our bad connection. I've just popped the fuse out. I'm gonna show you this. This is a little diamond file. These are wonderful. They're not very expensive and a wonderful investment if you're running a classic car. How do we use them? Well, you can see it's shaped like a spade, the same as a little spade connection, so you can put it inside the connection of the back of a switch or a plug. You can also use it like this real simply by giving it a twist on the end of this badly corroded fuse and cleaning it right up. The diamond is just lightly abrasive. It's not very strong, but it's strong enough to clean it up, okay? I can show you how we use it here on the fuse board by just giving these fuse connections a little bit of a sand, okay? Cleaning up those connections. So in this situation, what we're hoping is when we put this fuse back in, the bulb will hopefully light if we've diagnosed this problem correctly. So putting our fuse in and getting that connection working. And there we go, our bulb is lighting, meaning that we diagnosed our connection, we found our problem, okay? I have another problem built in here. I put a break in the cable. I'm gonna just show you how we would diagnose that to give you another example of how you would find fault. We've repaired our fuse, but the bulb is still not lighting. Let's keep on this fault finding mission. So let's check our work first. Have we repaired the fuse? Our bulb is lighting there, it was before. Is it now lighting the other side of the fuse? It is, so we now have repaired this fault, but there might still be a fault. Next place to check is the back of the switch. There we go, we have got live at the back of the switch. So the next place the fault could be is in the switch itself. Have we got live coming out of the switch between our earth and live? And yes, we have power coming out of our switch. That tells us that our circuit is good from the battery all the way through the switch and the output. Let's check the back of the bulb to see if we have live there. We don't. That tells us the fault is between the back of the switch and the bulb. Now you can clearly see that we have a broken wire. Of course, this is a setup board so I can demonstrate fault finding so you can clearly see where the fault is. Imagine this was in a vehicle and that would be inside the wiring loom. Obviously, you would not be able to see it. You'd have no idea what was going on. Let's connect that up and see does the bulb light and sure enough, if we can get these wires to come together, the bulb will stay lighting. And it does. There's the bulb stain lighting. Where else could we have a fault in this circuit? The only other place we could have a fault might be in the earth. So could we test that with this bulb setup? Absolutely. Let's get an earth here off of the starter motor mounting and let's check the back of the bulb. Sure enough, that bulb is lighting up. What that's telling me guys is that I have voltage through this wire, through my bulb and here. The only fault that could be left would be the earth. And if we make a good air connection, there goes the bulb, it lights up again. So we fault found all the way through the circuit. Hopefully that makes that a little bit easier. I wanna show you another bit of fault finding here on the starter motor circuit. Next circuit we're gonna test is the starter motor circuit. And what do we expect? We put our key in the ignition position and we lean across the spring and bang, the starter motor works. Perfect circuit. But what happens if the starter motor didn't work? Let's put a fault in there. We put our key in the ignition position, we lean on the spring, no cranking. Let's fault find this and see where the problem lies. We start, of course, with our bulb again. Go between a known earth and the positive and see does our bulb light? 
Yes, it does. That means that our bulb at least is good. Where is our power going to our key? It's coming from our battery to our fuse board, from our fuse board to the back of the key. So let's see, have we power at the fuse board? Yes, we have. Have we got power at the back of the key? Yes, we have. The next place the problem could be is inside the key. So the output we know is this terminal. So we'll go between that terminal and ERT and see if the key works. Yes, the key works. That means the problem must be between the key and the solenoid or the problem could be the solenoid or the starter. Let's see if we test between the key and the solenoid. No power there telling us that the problem is between there and there. What happens if we did get power there? That tells us then the problem might be the solenoid or the problem could be the starter motor. Is there any way of testing that with this bulb? No, unfortunately there isn't. But a really nice guy a few years ago taught me that you can test it using another method. A lot of people hark on about this method being dangerous. It's not dangerous at all according to this fella. He said all it has to be is someone else's screwdriver and preferably a snap-on. Okay, so how does this method work? It's pretty easy. What a solenoid is is a magnetically controlled switch. So this pulls a magnet on here which crosses out these two connections. If the magnet or the coil inside here gets worn out, it doesn't cross out these connections and therefore it doesn't drive the starter motor. So what can we do? We can use an old heavy piece of iron, in this case a screwdriver, to physically bridge out these two connections and see if the starter motor runs. If it does run, then we know the problem is our solenoid. So let's try it. We bridged out the connection. The starter motor ran, telling us the problem would be our solenoid. If it comes down to the starter motor, is the starter motor a fault? There is ways of testing the starter motor. Maybe we can revisit that in another video. And that's it. A simple look at fault finding. I could go on about this for hours. And if you do want me to make more videos going deeper in and taking a more technical look at fault finding, let me know in the comments below. We'll make those videos in the future for you. I hope you enjoyed this video and if it's your first time to the channel, maybe give us a like, a share and a subscribe so other people can see these videos as well and hopefully help other people get out in their garages and get fall finding. Thank you very much and I'll see you next week for another one.